and welcome to another episode of the Snowies Camping Show. You are here with Ben and Lauren and we are going to talk about a topic that has been flogged to death, but it is a bit topical with fire ban season finishing up and people doing more cooking over fire in, in their camping adventures and things like that and loads of people new to camping in the last six to 12 months as well. So, Ben, cast iron or spun steel, what do you reckon? Well, I'm a bit of both. Mm-hmm. Currently I'm cast iron. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking of going to spun steel, we'll cover reasons why shortly. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, they both do the same job. But I've got to mention, there's going to be a lot of things people will have to say about this, what they prefer cooking, what they can cook in it, even recipe ideas and that sort of thing. And yeah. we really want to hear uh, our viewers' opinions, thoughts. Absolutely. Tell us we're wrong, tell us we're right, add to what we've got to say. And the best place to do that is on our Facebook group. So jump on the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook yep. group, join the group and join in on the conversation. It's possibly happening right now as you're listening to this. So jump in and check it out. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on us on more awesome videos in the yeah. future. Talking myself up there, tickets you on are. myself. Absolutely. Anyway, back to the topic. So yeah, I've got a um I've got a cast iron mm-hmm. camp oven at the moment. I had it for a long time. I don't actually take it with me that often because I'm my minimalist lightweight style. And you don't have a fire a lot. Not a lot. If, mm-hmm. if, if I'm camping with other people, mm-hmm. then we'll have a fire um, because it's a social sort of thing and we can cook on it. You can cook large amounts of food. Um, but if it's just my family and I, then my girls, use, I've got two girls, um, and my wife, they like to be in the tent early because they just get eaten by mosquitoes. So usually just ends up being me sitting by the campfire right. till yeah, late right. at night. Mm-hmm. And it's almost not worth having it if you're just going to cook it for a short period of time. So it's either a small campfire or cook on the on the gas oven, but that's mm-hmm. just me. Mm-hmm. But I do enjoy when we have a big fire using my cast iron camp oven, and especially when you cook for a group and you, we've made, you had a big pizza cook up on some nights and awesome. just damp for everyone. And it yeah, is, it does create, a a, it's yeah. a good social thing and it kind yeah. of makes a nice long, slow night of it. If you're cooking small pizzas in a, in <laughs> you're, a cast you're feeding, you're feeding camp 10 oven. people and you're making pizzas this big, you yeah. know, I'm holding my hands up here for those who are watching, like, you know, a, what is that? A, an what, eight, like eight inch pizza eight or inch something. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, to feed so, 50. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has one slice and then they got to wait 20 minutes it's for the next one. Yeah. But there are some different, Differences between them. At the end of the day, they both achieve the same thing. You kind of need to change the way you cook with them. But yeah, sort um, of, I guess. I mean, like there there are main differences of the first one, obviously, being the weight. Cast iron is is very very heavy compared to spun steel, and I'd be confident to say that spun steel is probably at least half of the weight when you're I looking at a similar, less. like a you know nine quart camp oven equivalent. Yeah, would be half the weight. I mean, some yep. of those cast iron camp ovens and nine court ones sit around like ten kilos or something like they're that. A heavy so item. Yeah. they're quite heavy. Um, and then obviously the other big one is cast iron is brittle. If you drop it and it cracks, you're done. Yeah, well, it's made through a. Why well, should I? I don't know the process, but it's a a um, what do you call a place that. Like, like it's a molten thing. A foundry. It's a foundry. That's the word I'm looking yeah. for. It's poured into a sort of um, mold. A mold, I suppose, mm-hmm. isn't it? So it's um it's made from mel- molten metal, mm-hmm. um, and it ends up being quite brittle. So if you were to drop a, a cast iron camp oven, keeping in mind they're pretty heavy, if you were to drop them, they would shatter yeah. or crack. Yeah. And I don't think it's easy to fix those. And if you can get it fixed, it's probably going to far outweigh the cost of your average affordable camp oven nowadays anyway. That's right. Whereas a spun steel one is made, I'm not sure how what it starts, out from, but it's a yeah. either solid or, or I'm a sheet of sure steel. I'm pretty sure it's actually, yeah, it's a sheet of steel and they sort of spin it whilst also like using, I don't know, don't get me, don't like quote me on this, but I'm, I'm from memory. They, they sort of spin it around where you get the name spun steel, but they've got like brushes and heavy sort of things Just that come it. in to shape it as yeah. it's sort of spinning. And yeah. I reckon that's how they do it from memory. So that was it's made like from my, a technical, solid, my technical <laughs> it's made rundown from a solid, there. solid piece of steel though, yeah, right, isn't it? So it is, it's kind yep. of bent into shape. And for that reason, if you were to drop a spun steel just camp, dings up. it's going to dent or get out of shape. Mm. If you could use it while it's out of shape of or course. you can just use a hammer or, yeah, or something. Yeah, it's not going to crack or break or anything like that. I mean, having said that though, I, don't I've never had a cast iron camp oven that's broken and I don't know I think maybe I might have only spoken to a couple of people in the whole time I've worked here in from customers perspective that are replacing one they've dropped so if you look after them they they'll last forever yeah I pack mine in the four wheel drive with cardboard between the lid and yep. the base so that if it bounces around there's less chance yeah. of it breaking mm. but it is a consideration the weight's the big one though in mm. that respect with what it's made from definitely yeah, and I mean, I think um, 
you know, there's lots of people that I know who are using cast iron camp ovens that they've inherited and, yeah. uh, you know, speaking to a customer also recently, they were replacing one that they inherited from their dad who their dad was given when he turned like 21 or something and it was his old faithful and then he it passed down to the son and it had only just finally sort of, I think he ended up actually dropping it by mistake or it fell out of the car. So that's the only reason why I had to yeah, replace wow. it. But mind you, those spun steels only fairly... I say fairly new. It's been around for 10 sort of plus years, but in terms of cast iron, it's fairly new. So it's not like we've got the same historical point of reference for longevity and things like that. I guess not, no. I, but, I mean, I guess the steel thing's going to last forever. But, yeah, but cast course. iron does last. People sort of think they rust and, and go bad, but they even if they are rusty, you can recover them. And mm. I know um, there's a, a another um, – He's not a, not a celebrity, but he's he's a well known person in camp oven cooking realms. His oh, yeah. name's Mick Villa, and he's got his own website and does a lot of his own videos and things. Mm-hmm. And um, I've seen a, a couple of things to, to reference that I've seen recently from him. One that he had a a cast iron camp oven that he's he dated back to eighteen hundred and something like that. So it, wow. it had been around for a long time. That's a long time. Um, and him and his mates who were previously the cast iron boys, they, they did this video on um, reviving an old camp oven and it, they put it in this, like soak it in molasses or something. Yeah, right. And then go through the whole process, which we'll touch on shortly on care mm. of the camp oven and revived it again. So on longevity, it seems that a cast iron camp oven could last hundreds of years potentially. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, talking about the um, – the sort of care of it and the reviving of it in terms of the the in use maintenance and and care factor of the camp ovens they're they're sort of they're pretty similar well i mean the maintenance component is similar it's just when you're talking about seasoning and things like that i feel like that come there's a bit of a difference there but yeah looking yeah i mean you, you've got to there's two things really Keep it seasoned mm-hmm. and store it dry. I would yep. say are the two things you've got to follow: store it dry, and that's particularly relevant with cast iron camp ovens because of that um, process that it's made with the molten metal. It kind of gives little air pockets in there, and yeah. if you then submerge that in water, it will um, take on the water in those little air pockets. Yeah, and it's if you don't, porous. Yeah, yeah, and if you don't porous is a good word. Yeah, mm. if you don't dry it properly, then that's going to um, sort of start to rust from the inside out. I mm-hmm. suppose. Um, so, so basically when you first get your camp oven, like you need to see, well, I mean, they say they come pre-seasoned or I know a lot of the cast iron ones do, but I would still personally wash them. Like I wouldn't be pulling them out of the box and being like, oh, they're seasoned and just getting on with it. I would definitely be washing it. They say that they're seasons, but we reckon most, most people do recommend you do a good seasoning anyway. Yeah. So give it a scrub because you don't know what's come from the factory and yeah, what's of course. come from the factory. So give it a clean you don't need to scrub it really hard, just some warm soapy water, give mm-hmm. it a clean, dry it out completely. Um, do the same with the car or with the spun steel ones as well, because they quite often have a coating on them or an yeah. oil coating or something to yeah, stop them Yeah, they do. Rusting. It's like food, some sort of food grade coating to protect it whilst it's in storage or, or from manufacturer to end user essentially, because you don't want to open up a box and it's brand new, but it's gone rusty. So yeah, yeah that's right. got to get that coating off. Generally. You don't want to be eating that oil. So give no, it a clean yep. and then you need to season it, which is a, We've got a video on that on our, on our YouTube channel and you can oh, find yes. them all over yep. the place. Um, but it's basically the process of – now we've spoken about this previously and you, used to, you went into po- polymers and poly- – I don't know, some science. Some science, anyway, yeah, some science. But the basic, basic process is um, to create a, a protective barrier between like your food and the – Material that they're cast on. That so you're sort of making of. a non-stick surface, basically, aren't yeah. you? And you're, yeah. you're just burning this layer of oil, basically yeah. that sticks. At, and it, and it is a if you get a good coating, a good seasoning, it is a really good non-stick it surface. Is really it good. cleans up really easily, better than any of your high-end, uh, um, you know, fry pans. Or I probably shouldn't say that. I've never really used yeah. a high-end fry pan, but it is a really good surface. And mm. the process is the same for both. Yes, but I find I have both, and I cook with both, and I find the biggest difference between them two when it comes to that is the spun steel ones. Just in my opinion, take a little bit longer to sort of fully break them in. Like I find with your cast iron one, if you've got a new cast iron one and you're seasoning it up, you're pretty much good to go after that initial season. You might need to do it a second time maybe, but I feel like with the spun steel, 
I, I had to do it a good couple of times the first time round, and then continue to do good seasons. Like it was a good couple of trips away before it really fully broke in and got to the same loveliness on the inside that I would like it to be like my cast iron ones would be. Okay. Maybe that's because of the porous nature, I suppose. I, the, I reckon the it would be. The porous nature of the cast yeah. iron takes on that layer of oil a bit more or it adheres a little bit better maybe. Yeah. And I think yeah. with the spun steel, when it's properly um, – when it's properly uh, like sealed, seasoned, seasoned yep. thank you. I <laughs> lost the word there for a minute. It's like quite brown. It looks dirty on the inside but it's not. It's like got that brownish golden coppery colour because yep. obviously being a light metal you see that burnt on oil and that that um, seasoning layer which you can't see on the cast iron because it's which black. Is, it's just this shininess. I, I like you, you said the loveliness on the inside. The loveliness, yeah. The outside of camp ovens usually end up sort of black and scarred and there's ash and, yep. and bits of, uh, you know, black charcoal on it and a little bit of rust spots and that sort yeah. of thing. Um, and I know mine looks like that. It, it's it's You pull it out and your hands get dirty. But then you pull the lid off and you look inside it's and like, you have got this oh. sort of, yeah, this space <laughs> yeah. of shiny loveliness. It's black and it's clean yeah. and it's, it's got a fresh coat of oil on it and that's where oh. you cook your food inside this dirty kind of that's thing right. on the outside. And, and that, like that's what you're trying to achieve. Fresh coat of oil, you made a good point there. It's like when you're putting it away, putting it away dry, but it's also good to give it a wipe with a coat of oil as yep. well just to like add an extra protect- protective layer. Yep. In there, just yep. as, as sort of best habit, isn't it? Best yeah, practice. D- yeah, I always mm. do that. You can do it on the outside as well. I don't because I store it dry and that mm. usually mitigates any issues with rust. But then if I put that coat of oil on the inside, then next time I'm heating it up, but this is how I, I operate mm. anyway, next time I'm heating it up in the campfire, it's kind of like another little mini seasoning. Mini se- I leave yeah. that oil on there sort of wipe it around, heat it up, and it, and it just adds another layer. It's a bit like when you're painting, right? It's better to do lots of sort of – in coats of paint than just yeah. one big, big paint. Yeah. It's a little bit like that with seasoning. You just keep so maintaining that seasoning thing um, we should probably touch on washing it because there's a big debate on whether, I was about to say, uh, on whether talk you about can that. or can't wash them. But um, my theory is that it, it, you can wash them with detergent. Yeah. Not scrubbing it. Don't use a scour or a really rough brush. Just use a cloth. While the pot's still warm, mm. um, not hot, just warm, and it should clean up nicely with some warm soapy water. Don't submerge it. Just try and wipe that, that out, the inside yeah. of the pot. Because we did have a bit of a, a back and forth about this earlier, didn't we? Because I was like, no, you absolutely don't wash it with detergent. Like that's ridiculous because yeah. in my experience, any time detergent has gone anywhere near any of my cast iron stuff because I use cast iron at home in my kitchen as well, it, it ruins it. But I think – I, I have only ever, for years and years and years, only ever just used hot water and I just pop it straight under the hot water whilst it's still hot, like fresh from be- being on the stove. And I do have a brush. It's like a, a, I think it's like a horsehair veggie brush or something. So it's not like stainless steel or steel wool or whatever, hardcore, but just give it a bit of a swizzle around and then leave it to dry and pop it away in the cupboard. But I think maybe that whole, because we Googled it because I was like detergent, is bad. It's a it's a big no. But well, then, you were having that conversation with the team, that's right? right. And I was telling like, no, 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 don't that, do that's this wrong. Don't do it. Don't do it. But I walked in and said, no, you can do that. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> but then when we googled it, it sort of it it actually would. It says every single link that comes up when you Google it. It's like myth, myth, myth. And I'm like, okay, so maybe I'm wrong. But I think it's more so that. You know, if you're squirting detergent on it and you're trying to give it a scrub like you would all your other dishes, then I reckon yes. But if it's just a matter of, like you say, using a cloth that you've just pulled out of a, a basin of soapy water or something or you're just giving it a light wipe over, you shouldn't have any troubles at all. Yeah, I reckon that's fine. And that's what I use. And then just another coat of oil and it's that maintenance thing. I think maybe washing it just yeah. removes a little bit, but then if you do that coat of oil and just put it back on the oven, then you're, yeah. you're replacing it and maintaining it. And if you get to a point where – you find it's you've got to scrub a bit hard to get it off, then maybe it's time to just redo the season redo. On, on your camp. That's oven. true. And there's been some times in the past where with my camp, um, like my camping cook gear, because we, we don't camp a huge amount in summer um, and then when it comes into the warmer season and you're pulling out all your gear and you might not have touched it for a couple of months, um, there has been a few times where I've pulled it out and it's gone a bit rusty just because I might not have put it away perfectly dry or there might have been moisture in the air or, you know, who knows. Um, but like, and sometimes we get calls from customers being like, oh, I've got my camp oven and it's really rusty. I need to get a new one. And it's like, no, you don't actually just give it a good scrub, give it a good clean, wash all that rust off and then just start again. It'll yep. be as good as new. Yeah, easy. It's not, it's not ruined. You mm. can revive it. I mean, it's only really ruined if you get into the point where there's actually flakes of rust falling off. If yeah. it's surface rust, 
perfectly uh, surface manageable. Surface fine, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the only other real difference really is from my perspective is how you're actually using it in terms of your cooking and, and things like, like that. Basically, I find the ca- the cast iron camp oven is really good for doing baking or roasting or any sort of cooking that might require a bit more long-term sort of planning or control. Yeah. And hundred percent controlled heat. Whereas the spun steel I find is more similar to, you know, your stainless steel pots and pans that you would use at home and for active cooking, I guess, or that's how I use it in my setup. Yep. Yeah. Um, It's you can, in a nutshell, you can do the same thing in both, but you just cook slightly differently because of the heat. And you did show me a really cool video that I can't yes, remember. Who that was someone- it was from a YouTuber called Lock Your Hubs Four Wheel Drive. Yes. And he did this nifty video uh, where he had two camp ovens, spun steel, cast iron, pop them over hot coals and then used a thermal camera to see how fast they heated heated up and their maximum temperatures on on a time lapse. And then did the same thing, but in reverse, taking them off of the coals and see how quickly they cooled down. And so that was really awesome. If you sort of geek out on that sort of stuff, um, but head, but head to that video. But it was cool, yeah. It was it, very but, cool. And so the spun steel heated up super quickly and to really a hot. much higher temperature. I think around two forty. Although, yep. don't quote me. And but the cast iron took you know almost twice as long. But it sat at around 190, 200, and yeah. sort of. Um, so obviously, then when he took it off the heat, the same thing happened in reverse. The spun steel dropped its heat really quick. The cast iron retained it and just sort of slowly tapered away. So, if you are needing, as you mentioned before, touched on that controlled um, temperature and cooking type thing, like with baking your dampers and and your, slow, slow cooking uh, roasts and, or, that or, sort of thing. or yeah. like your eight inch pizzas for fifty <laughs> people, <laughs> then your cast iron is the way to go. But the thing I do like about the spun steel is that um, you can pretty much use or most of the ones that I've seen or that we sell anyway. It, it you sort of get. Uh, like a three in one, you get a yeah. saucepan and you get a fry pan and you get a camp oven as yep. well. Cause you can use the lid as a fry pan. And so for me, when I'm doing active cooking, like maybe you've got a big thing of baked beans or you're doing a casserole or something that you need to actively stir or, or, or things like that. That's what I like to use the spun steel for. That's a big attractive factor to me. Cause I try and have two uses for everything and that's three essentially. And I might be able to drop other things out of my kit and replace it with just one camp oven because it does multiple things. And also on that point as well, because the spun steel is a lot lighter, it will ha- it will give you a lot more functional use throughout the year if you're camping in summer and you can't have fires and you need to cook on your gas stove. It won't, by the time you chuck a, a cast iron camp oven in there that's full of food, it's really, really heavy and a lot of your, your camping stoves can't really hack that it. amount of weight, whereas a spun steel, you'd have no trouble using it on your gas stove. You're also going to plough through a lot more gas using cast iron you on will. a gas stove because of the time it takes to heat up. Of course, yeah. I think I, I guess to like if my move to, which I think I will do, is move to uh, spun steel. Mm. And if we go back to my, my pizzas, right, I, I cook pizzas in my, I've got a nine-inch um, cast iron camp oven mm-hmm. and the, the pizza goes in a, I've got a round pizza it was kind of an oven dish really that it, that it goes on and then that sits on top of a trivet. So it ends up being a centimetre or so above the base of the mm. camp oven and then coals on top of that. So there's a gap between kind of the really hot surface yeah. of the pizza. If I was to do the same thing in um, spun steel to try and give people you an idea of how they need might need to change it. I would need a trip, but I'd probably actually even try and raise it higher to almost try and suspend that pizza kind of yeah. in the middle of the space of the mm-hmm. oven so there's more air going around it because the heat coming through is going to be, as you mentioned before, it's yeah. going to be more intense, right? So you're going to cook quicker on one side than the, than the other. I think some spun steel companies also do things like um, a veggie roasting ring or a veggie oh, roasting yeah. rack that actually is designed to go in the spun steel camp oven, which it will it keeps the things that you want to roast like your spuds or your carrots or whatever off the base quite high in an area where it will more effectively roast. So you can definitely do those things with your spun steel. You just might have to alter the way that you're used to cooking in your cast iron and it might also take a little while for you to find that sweet spot of how you cook your food in a spun steel. 
Yeah, there'd be less coals on the top and bottom. Yeah. But finding, I mean, there's a there's a learning process with cast iron too. So if you're just starting out, yeah, whichever one you get, the learning process is probably going to be about the same That's because true. you're going to put stuff on. You're going, I yeah. burnt it, or I didn't, or it was undercooked. I'll yeah. add more coals, add less coals, mm. modify until you until it cooks to your preference. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. But I think I think ultimately uh, they're both an excellent option, and they both have really good. There's pros and cons for each of them. Um, what, about, oh, what about Australian made? I was going to say the, the last thing. point I was going to make is that on on this debate is that a lot of people call up and they're like, oh, uh, why don't you sell Australian cast iron? Like I want Australian cast iron. It's like, well, it's really actually really, really, really difficult to get. Like as far as I'm aware, there are no um, commercially active foundries or, or active foundries that commercially produce Australian cast iron um, camping cookware. Like I know there's a, a brand called Solid Technics, which does cast iron stuff, which you can get, um, but it's more domestic related stuff, not big camp oven stuff like uh, what you're used to seeing on a campfire. Um, but there are a cup, uh, like I know you can get them, but they're really, really, really expensive and they're not a consistent supply. They're just an every now and then sort of they might become available. Um, there's a foundry in Victoria or something that, yeah. that they've kind of got them on their website. Bill, well, there's got like an inquiry. I think it's Billman's and you can make an inquiry. You can't purchase no them, but there's no pricing and things like that. But I do remember looking at it once a little while ago when they we, they did have pricing up and it's quite expensive. So for majority of, of people who get out there and camp and want cast iron camp ovens, Australian made cast iron is is unachievable. Yep. So when it comes to your spun steel, we like Hillbilly, um, Southern Metal Spinners, Dr. Livingston Baduri, all Australian made and owned businesses and so if that Australian made component is important to you then the spun steel is really affordable and an and an excellent product to get um yep yeah so that's probably worth mentioning yeah I agree I mean the the, for the same price for an Australian made spun steel camp oven you could get uh an overseas made cast iron one that's equivalent but the Australian one's going to be Five, six times that price, probably. If you yeah, had to guess, yeah, I'd, I'd really say expensive. I'd say you're probably looking at minimum three times the cost times, of, a, yeah. of a spun steel one for an Australian cast iron one, which is which is a lot. So, um, yeah, if Australian made is important to you, then the spun steel would be a really awesome option. Give it a go with the spun steel first, and then if you get right into it, and you become a, a a cast iron or a, a camp oven pro. Then maybe look at a, an Australian made one. Yeah, absolutely. So we want to know what your what team you are on. Are you on Team Cast Iron or are you on Team Spun Steel? So yes. you can jump online, as Ben mentioned earlier in the podcast, to our Facebook group and we'd really love to hear from you. Also, if you've got any amazing campfire recipes or tips and tricks with your own camping cooking, we would love to hear it. And yeah, you did. Hey, if you use both camp ovens, what do you do differently between the two? Because that's yes, the most common point. thing is how, what do I have to do differently? What mm-hmm. cooks better? They both cook the same. You just need to do things differently. Maybe we can fast track people's learning curve. If you guys with all, all the all the know or the experience can mm-hmm. let people know, maybe you don't want to give up your secrets. I don't yeah, know. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, don't forget to uh, subscribe because I think we're we're done on this episode now. I, I think, think we're we, done. We've bashed it to death just it once more. But hey, we've got a little bit more. on the Snow's Camping Show. So don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast so you don't miss another episode. Jump online to our Facebook group and don't forget to check out our show notes. We'll put the links to the videos that we've mentioned um, and you, I think any, any other, any other articles. Useful or articles or, or bits and bobs from this will pop in there. Um, and check out snowies.com.au yes. where you'll find tons of campfire cooking gear. Yep. At lowest prices every day. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks guys. We'll see, see you later, week. folks. Bye.